fellow ministers and distinguished guests, it is both a privilege and a high point of my tenure as Secretary of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services to co-host today's virtual signing of the Geneva Consensus Declaration. I'm honored to be joined in marking this important occasion by Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. And together we bring greetings and appreciation from President Trump, who has praised this initiative on numerous occasions and repeatedly fought for its ideals in global fora. We wish we could be together in person to celebrate this historic achievement, but we're grateful for your participation virtually. As today's gathering reflects, even during COVID-19, we can find safe and creative ways to keep our important work moving forward. In signing the declaration today, the United States is honored to stand alongside Brazil, Egypt, Hungary, Indonesia, and Uganda, the cross-regional co-sponsors for the declaration. We're humbled by the support of the 32 nations who today are signing the declaration. Today is not the last chance that nations have to sign on to this document. We invite other countries to join this effort in the coming months and years. I hope you will also join us next year for the Global Women's Health Summit, where we will forge a new path forward to improve the lives of women across the globe. The same goals that underpin today's ceremonial signing event will inform the work of that summit. The Geneva Consensus Declaration is an, an historic document, stating clearly where we as nations stand on women's health, the family, honoring life, and defending national sovereignty. The Declaration is much more than a statement of beliefs. It is a critical and useful tool to defend these principles across all United Nations bodies and at every multilateral setting using language previously agreed to by member states of those bodies. I want to briefly recount how far we have come in getting to this point. Our growing partnership began about a year and a half ago when, thanks to the leadership of Garrett Grigsby and Valerie Huber, who I'm privileged to work with here at HHS, and our colleagues at the State Department, nine countries came together on a joint statement at the 2019 World Health Assembly in Geneva to rally around these priorities. Later that fall at the UN General Assembly, 21 countries communicated their support in another joint statement for, quote, programs to improve the health, life, dignity, and well-being of women, men, children, and families, and asked that, quote, the UN, including UN agencies, focus on concrete efforts that enjoy broad consensus among member states, rather than introducing concepts for which there will never be consensus. These statements brought badly needed attention to a disturbing trend. With increasing frequency, some rich nations and UN agencies beholden to them are wrongly asserting abortion as a universal human right. These efforts pressure countries to institute progressive abortion laws or risk losing global funding or standing in international fora. Tragically, women around the world unnecessarily suffer health challenges, all too often deadly health challenges. While too many wealthy nations and international institutions put a myopic focus on a radical agenda that is offensive to many cultures and derails agreement on women's health priorities. Today we put down a clear marker. No longer can UN agencies reinterpret and misinterpret agreed upon language without accountability. Member states set the policy for the UN to pursue, not the other way around. Without apology, we affirm that governments have the sovereign right to make their own laws to protect innocent life and write their regulations on abortion. The stakes are too high to permit radical divisive agendas to hinder the ability of women in countries at all stages of development to attain better health. Today's Geneva Consensus Declaration builds upon last year's joint statements for formalizing our work together to defend these critical values. Our coalition will hold multilateral organizations accountable. We will denounce these organizations when they overstep their mandates by promoting positions that can never gain consensus. We will unequivocally declare that there is no international right to abortion. We will proudly put women's health first at every stage of life. This declaration agreed to by a coalition representing every region on earth and more than 1.6 billion human beings is a new and powerful tool in this noble and life-saving effort.
Countries represented today are diverse in geography, size, culture, religion, and ethnicity. We were bound in a powerful way by our common goals. Today we commit to work together until we accomplish each of our shared goals. For women and girls, for families, for life in all stages of development, and the sovereignty of each of our nations. It's difficult to win these battles alone, but together we are stronger, and together we can deliver for women, girls, and all the nations and peoples we represent. It's now my tremendous pleasure to introduce the Secretary of State for the United States, my good friend Mike Pompeo, a key leader and ally on all of these efforts to offer some remarks. Thank you, Secretary Pompeo, for being here, and thank you for leading these historic efforts. Good morning, everyone. It's an incredible privilege to be here today to co-host along with uh, my good friend, uh, Secretary Alex Azar. Alex and I both share a deep uh, and very personal commitment to protect human dignity. Uh, our agencies have worked tirelessly together. I want to thank Assistant Secretary Pam Pryor uh, and the HHS team uh, for their remarkable work. This is a culmination of lots of hard work, uh, a chance to celebrate, too, uh, for these joint efforts. Uh, Secretary Azar opened these, uh, this ceremony with some background on what we've accomplished prior to this point. It's true, what he said. Under President Trump's leadership, the United States has defended the dignity of human life everywhere and always. He's done it like no other president in history. We've mounted an unprecedented defense of the unborn abroad. In front of world leaders at the 2019 United Nations General Assembly, President Trump said, quote, we in America believe that every child, born and unborn, is a sacred gift from God. During our administration, U.S. taxpayer dollars will never go to foreign non-governmental organizations that perform or actively promote abortion as a method of family planning. We are also at the State Department fully applying the law prohibiting the use of department funds to lobby on abortion. Last year, uh, Secretary Azar and I sent a letter to like-minded nations asking for their support in advancing human dignity on the world stage. The result of that was that we delivered 20 of them to prepare a joint statement to decry pro-abortion language in UN documents. Together, these nations said clearly, there simply is no international right to abortion. Today, we're taking the next step as we signed the Geneva Consensus Declaration at its very core, the Declaration protects women's health, defends the unborn, and reiterates the vital importance of the family as the foundation of society. The Declar Declaration restates that there is no international right to an abortion. It goes even further, affirming that every country has its own sovereign right to determine its own laws with respect to abortion. We say clearly, quote, there is no international obligation on the part of states to finance or facilitate abortion, end of quote. But perhaps most importantly, perhaps most importantly, the, the Declaration reaffirms the inherent dignity and worth of every human being by emphasizing that every human being has the fundamental right to human life. Indeed, this is what the American founders knew so clearly. It's what we're upholding here today, that legacy. It's historic to be here. It's the first time that a multilateral coalition has been built around the issue of defending life. Some 32 nations have now signed this document, five of them co-sponsoring with the United States, Brazil, Egypt, Hungary, Indonesia, and Uganda. To, together, we represent every major religion of the world. It's a group of countries that respects life and the U.S. is proud to stand with each and every one of them. By signing this declaration today, we're, we're doing more than just signing on, agreeing on the importance of these issues. We are making a commitment to work together at the United Nations and in other international settings to achieve tangible results. I'm confident that we will. I'm truly proud of the work that our teams have done. 
the multilateral backing that we've achieved and the momentum that we have built. And as we sign this very explicit declaration today, may its moral clarity embolden others to admire our stand and indeed to join our cause.